Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF News video. Listen, we got a lot of stuff lined up for this video, so we're not gonna waste any more time. If you're brand new, consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about FNAF News all the gosh dang time. And also, like 80 to 90% of the people watching are still unsubscribed. Please, we're trying to get to 50k by the end of the year. So it would mean a lot if you just took the two seconds, scroll down, hit the subscribe button while you're down there, like the video as well. So let's kick the video off by talking about some brand new FNAF books. Well, they're the same old FNAF books, but they're in a brand new bundle because for some reason we're getting a two-in-one Fazbear Frights book bundle. This has been spotted in a few stores recently, so I guess they're already being rolled out. But it's weird because we already have a lot of Fazbear Frights collections, including a one-in-three collection. So why we need a two-in-one, I have absolutely no clue. Another collection that just recently released is actually the Fazbear Frights graphic novel collection, volume number one. I got it right here, and we did actually get a few more teasers of the book itself a couple days before it launched. But yeah, the book is actually now officially out so no longer do we have to rely on previews because we can look at the whole book speaking of books let's move on now to tales from the pizza plex because a lot of the books in this series have been getting preview after preview one of the previews we got was for the story somnophobia in the book somnophobia here's a quick summary of the story so far it's a snippet in the middle of the story so we have some missing context but sam and his friends have a device named the dream sphere in which they use to get smarter the device contains a holographic moon that comes out, named Moondrop officially, that transport them into a psychedelic type state like drugs. That's right, <laughs> kids are getting high in these books. What the hell's going on? The trippy part is, the dream sphere seems to take open books and notes and turns it into psychedelic reality. For instance, they are transported to Giza due to an open history notebook. They use this to take advantage of the dream sphere to become smarter by using equations. So that is a very quick synopsis of kind of the middle of the Somnophobia story. And speaking of stories in Somnophobia, we actually have the official titles for each story. You got Somnophobia, Pressure, and also Clitherophobia. The descriptions of each of the stories will be on screen right now, so if you want to pause them, give them a read, feel free to. Moving on to the fourth entry now in the Tales from the Pizzaplex series, because this book actually got another cover change. So this was the first initial cover for the book, and after a little bit, they switched it to this new cover. And now, for some reason, we have a third different cover. As you can see, the brand new cover features the mermaid animatronic character detailed on the front, and also the sea serpent is kind of circling behind her. So super weird that they changed the cover for the book yet again. I'm curious which cover is actually your favorite. I know a lot of people are missing the diver from the first two covers, but also I know a lot of people, let's just say, are fans of the new mermaid character. <laughs> Moving on now, we have the official title for the fifth book in Tales from the Pizzaplex. The title is The Bobby Dot's Conclusion, which on its own is a very weird title. Though it does make sense when you realize that one of the stories in this book, the title story, is actually going to be a continuation story of Abe's story from Submechanophobia. So I think for the first time in these, all these FNAF books, like even across Fazbear Frights, this is the first time we've gotten like a two-parter in a way with the story. That's going to be interesting. So that is all the news we have for books. Now let's move on to some merchandise. We got a whole bunch of just random shirts and pins from Hot Topic and different stores. So first up, we have this green security breach shirt, which I did pick up. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not the most appealing shirt just because it, it just looks like someone took a bunch of graphics and then threw it onto a poorly colored shirt why did they go for green though we did get some other shirts that in my opinion look much much better this is a brand new security breach t-shirt uh by jc penny actually and it features some amazing art on the front i freaking i love that art it looks so so good it does say fnaf just covering one sleeve, which is so weird. I wish they didn't do that. And then here's another security breach shirt, which as you can see, it's just the box art for the game. And they just kind of slapped it on a t-shirt. This is from uh, Spencer's. And then we got some brand new security breach pins of Freddy and also a glitter chibi Freddy. Once again, I did pick these guys up and they look pretty good. Look at that. 
It looks so cute. I, they honestly look really, really good. Then we got a brand new look at a prototype version still of the Toy Freddy Hex plushie. He's looking pretty good. I like him so far. Very, very excited for the Toy Hex plushies. I still want to know what that Balloon Boy one's going to look like. He's probably my most anticipated plushie. Moving on now to some Funko merchandise. Remember that strange, you know, security breach balloon slash circus wave of merchandise that we're gonna get at some point down the road. Well, people have since found listings for plushies and also action figures for these characters. They're still branded as Security Breach. It's still Freddy Bonnie Chica Foxy and it's balloon circus themed. I don't know. I still don't know what's going on with this wave, but it looks like whatever it is, we're getting plushies, figures, Funko Pops, we're getting a whole bunch of stuff. Then we got some more ads for the brand new Funko Snaps, which people have been finding in stores apparently, which is so weird. Because I've been seeing a whole bunch of different release dates for these things, ranging from October all the way to February. Then we got a glimpse at the upcoming 10-inch um, tie-dye Freddy plushie. He was featured alongside the regular sized plushie in one of Funko's latest videos. So him and tie-dye Foxy are going to be Hot Topic exclusives. And since they're appearing in some Funko videos on their channel, I'm guessing they're gonna be releasing pretty soon. Speaking of plushies, I actually made a mistake in one of my latest FNAF News videos because I was told the information I was under the impression of was that the Funko Fanverse plushies would be coming out at the tail end of August. This turned out to be kind of true, but also kind of not at the same time, because on that date, August 25th, Kane actually made a tweet saying some people who have visited their GameStops have said that today is the day that the warehouses receive the plushies, but they still won't be available for sale for a while. It may take up to another month. Regardless, keep me updated. I have no additional info to share, so don't ask. And then a couple days later on the 2nd of September, he said lots of people asking me when the Funko Fanverse plushies will be available. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get extra info on this stuff. It's taking some more time for GameStop to receive the stock, but I have no idea when that will be resolved. I will tweet news as I receive it. So far, we've gotten no updates. So it looks like they've been shipped out to warehouses, which is good news, but they're still shipping out to actual GameStop stores, and no store has them right now. So that sucks, uh, that we have to wait a little while longer, but, I mean, they look good, so I'll be patient. And of course, whenever we do get more news on the plushies, I will include it in a FNAF News video, so subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Speaking of the fanverse, let's quickly make a pit stop at, <laughs> uh, Pop Goes Evergreen, because Kayan released a tweet, actually on August 25th as well, saying the toy animatronics return in Pop Goes Evergreen, but I wanted them to look like they've been ripped straight out of FNAF 2. So a big thank you to Alexis, who is walking with us on some extremely accurate custom toy models. So you can see a test render of Toy Freddy. He's waving to us. Hey, Toy Freddy, he looks so good. What's interesting is that Kane made a follow-up tweet saying, no, the toy animatronics won't appear in the main night gameplay for Evergreen. They appear somewhere else. Very very interesting. Switching back ever so quickly to some fanverse merchandise. Finally, after long last, the fanverse U2's figures are releasing on September 16th. As you can see, you got main man Candy the Cat. Oh, we finally got his design revealed to us. He looks so, so good. You got Pop Goes. He's got the finger guns. He's got a microphone in one hand. He looks awesome as well. And then you've got the man, the myth, the legend himself, Ignited Freddy from the Joy of Creation. They all look so good, in my opinion. I cannot wait to get them. So put it on your calendars, September 16th, 3 p.m. EST. These three bros release. The squad pulling up. Speaking of U2s, we also got revealed to us the upcoming Vanny mug. This is a teaser of it they posted in their Discord server. And then I also saw, um, at U2s underscore news on Twitter, replied to Kane Carter's tweet with this image. I'm not sure where they got it, but I thought I'd include it anyways, because this is a full 360 degree look at the upcoming merchandise of the Vanny mug. Still a very strange, very strange piece of merchandise. <laughs> and our final topics for today involve Security Breach and also Steel Wool Studios. They put out a tweet the other day announcing a brand new update to the Google Stadia 
um, addition of Security Breach. Adding in a crowd choice feature, streamers can now use the crowd choice feature to give their audience the opportunity to pick which route they should take, such as the loading dock versus the prize counter, Monty versus Chica, or staying versus leaving. They also added player stats and also uh, fixed a whole bunch of bugs. And finally, to celebrate the one year anniversary of Freddy and Friends on tour the other day, Steelwool actually put out a brand new blog post showing off some behind the scenes of the creation of Freddy and Friends on tour. As you can see, some... <laughs> some concept designs of the main gang. I will leave a link to the full blog post down below if you want to actually go through and read, you know, the actual text, but I'll show off some of the art. Here are the backgrounds. Oh my god, those look amazing. Very nice, very nice. Behind the scene process of the 2D animation. <laughs> I like that face. Here's Foxy. There it is. Look at that. And also, again, you know, huge credit, obviously, to the artists and people behind the, you know, development process. Freddy and Friends on tour was truly something amazing. I enjoyed it a lot. I know some people didn't like it because it was kind of a repeat each week, but it was amazing. It was something that FNAF had never done at the time, and I think it filled the void of, you know, anticipation for teasers and the actual game itself very, very nicely. And I really do hope we can see it make a comeback some point in the future, maybe to tease some stuff with, you know, the Ruin DLC. But it was just such a cool way of teasing the game and teasing the new characters in the game as well, and I hope we can see something like this again in the future. But that is all the FNAF news for today. A very long episode, probably, because we had a lot to go through. But I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.